150 million years ago. The Earth was not a gentle green planet, it was a furnace. The average temperature was 15% hotter than today. And the seawater was so warm you could mistake it for tap water. In this era, there was a land that became the stage for the greatest battles, an arena forged by drought and violence that was called the Morrison Formation. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the channel. Today, we're not just traveling through time, we're buying a front row seat to the most brutal tournament in planetary history. Welcome to the Morrison Battle Royale. This was a land in North America where the greatest predators of the Jurassic coexisted, but when resources grew scarce, when the droughts descended, only the strongest could survive. So, among these perfect killing machines, who was the true king? Allosaurus, the so-called Lion of the Jurassic? Or Saurophaganax, the Silent Giant? Let's analyze the evidence and find the answer. To find our champion, we must first meet the contenders. Four apex predators, four fighting styles, all vying for supremacy. Entering the arena first, a warrior often overshadowed by its larger rivals but whose danger cannot be underestimated. Introducing Ceratosaurus, don't let its size fool you. Weighing around one ton, it may be smaller than its opponents, but that is its advantage. Ceratosaurus was an opportunist. The transcript tells us it was a ferocious predator with a deadly bite. It didn't rely on brute force, but on speed and precision. It was a sharp dagger in a world of sledgehammers. And its strategy? Clever. Fossil data suggests it was often found near bodies of water. What does this mean? It didn't engage larger rivals in open spaces. Instead, it ambushed prey in tight riverside environments where its agility was maximized. It was a tactical predator, a swamp assassin, a formidable opponent for anyone. But if Ceratosaurus was the dagger, our next contender is the broadsword. A legend, an icon, an animal whose very name is synonymous with dominance, the champion of numbers, the lion of the Jurassic, Allosaurus. This was not just a predator, this was the most common predator in the Morrison. The transcript highlights a shocking number, 75%. Three out of every four carnivore fossils you find here belong to Allosaurus. What does this number tell us? Absolute success. And it had the weapons to back it up. At 1.7 tons it had the power to take down large prey, but its deadliest weapon was in its skull. Studies suggest Allosaurus didn't have a bone-crushing bite like the later T-Rex. Instead, it possessed a blood-inducing slashing bite. Imagine it using its jaw like a row of saw blades delivering a huge gash to its prey's flank and waiting for the victim to bleed out. A horrifyingly effective strategy. And there's one more factor, an ultimate skill that could change any fight. The transcript mentions the theory that it hunted in packs. A single Allosaurus was terrifying. A pack of Allosaurus. That was a walking nightmare. It wasn't just a fighter, it was a legion. Our contenders keep getting bigger. If Allosaurus was the all-around warrior, our next entry is an unstoppable tank. A member of the ancient and venerable Megalosaurid family. Torvosaurus. Four tons. Let that number sink in. It was more than twice the weight of an average Allosaurus. Torvosaurus was the embodiment of brute force. It didn't need complex tactics. Its tactic was to walk forward and crush everything in its path. The transcript describes it as gigantic and comparable to the largest predators. While Allosaurus used a slashing bite, Torvosaurus may have had a stronger jaw, built to clamp down and wrestle its prey. It was a wall of muscle and flesh, a fighter no one wanted to face head-on. If Allosaurus was the cavalry, Torvosaurus was the heavy infantry, slower but unstoppable. And finally, the one we've all been waiting for. A name that, when spoken, would silence the entire Morrison formation. The holder of the undisputed title, largest terrestrial carnivore on Earth 150 million years ago. A monster born to be king. Please, bow your heads for Saurophaganax, five tons equivalent to the weight of nearly four adult giraffes. It was a member of the Allosaurid family, but it was like a final boss version of Allosaurus. The transcript describes it as having robust arms, sharp claws, serrated teeth, and distinct crests, but differing in the shape of its vertebrae and, obviously, its body size. 
Sorophaganax was the pinnacle of individual power. It didn't need a pack. It was a pack in a single body. Every step it took shook the ground. Every roar it made was a declaration of its rule. It was the trump card, the gold standard by which all other predators were measured. But does being the strongest mean it was the true king of the ecosystem? That question will soon be answered. The contenders are ready. Let the battles begin. The first match. In a dry riverbed, where fallen logs create a maze of obstacles, in this corner, Serratosaurus, the agile assassin, and in the other corner, the all-around warrior, Allosaurus, a clash of speed versus stamina, and the fight begins. Serratosaurus makes the first move, weaving between the logs, keeping its distance. It knows a head-on confrontation is suicide. Allosaurus is watching its massive head tracking its opponent's every move. Serratosaurus strikes. It darts from behind a rock, aiming for the flank of Allosaurus, a lightning-fast bite. But Allosaurus reacts. It pivots, and the bite of Serratosaurus merely glances off, leaving a shallow scratch. Allosaurus roars in fury and counterattacks. It lunges, but Serratosaurus is already gone, vanishing behind another log. This is a battle of patience. Serratosaurus is trying to wear Allosaurus down, looking for an opening. But Allosaurus is no fool. It begins to use its power, ramming a rotten log to corner Serratosaurus. And there it is. Serratosaurus is trapped against a rock wall. There's no escape. Allosaurus seizes the opportunity. It charges, not to bite, but to use its full 1.7-ton body as a battering ram. A thunderous impact. Serratosaurus is slammed against the rock, stunned, and that's the decisive moment. Allosaurus leans in, delivering its signature slashing bite to its opponent's neck. It's over. A well-deserved victory for the Lion of the Jurassic, showcasing its experience and superior power. The winner, Allosaurus. And now, for the match we've all been waiting for. A battle of titans. A localized earthquake. On a vast, open plain, two of the largest land predators on the planet face off. Torvosaurus, the four-ton tank, and Saurophaganax, the five-ton king. There are no tactics here. This is pure primordial power. The two behemoths charge. The impact is like thunder. They use their heads and shoulders to shove each other, trying to gain leverage. Dust flies everywhere. Torvosaurus seems to have the upper hand in the wrestling match. It uses its powerful jaws to bite down on the shoulder of Saurophaganax, trying to hold it. But Saurophaganax is just too strong. It roars, using its powerful hind legs to push Torvosaurus back, and then it deploys its secret weapons, its robust arms and sharp claws. It swings, raking a long, deep gash down the side of Torvosaurus. Torvosaurus recoils in pain. A fatal mistake, it has exposed its flank. Saurophaganax doesn't wait. It lunges, its massive jaws gaping and clamps down on the neck of Torvosaurus. The sound of bone snapping can be heard from a distance. Torvosaurus struggles, but it's too late. The superior power of Saurophaganax has decided the fight. An incredible display of strength, the strongest, has proven its might. The winner, Saurophaganax. After two hypothetical battles, the results seem clear. Allosaurus beats Ceratosaurus, Saurophaganax beats Torvosaurus. And if a single Allosaurus faced a Saurophaganax one-on-one, -on -one, the outcome would almost certainly favor the five-ton giant. So, have we found the king of the Morrison Battle Royale? The answer is more complex than you think. The title, King of the Ecosystem, isn't just given to the strongest fighter in a duel. It's determined by a much more important factor, ecological success. And when we look at the big picture, an undeniable truth emerges, proven by thousands of fossils. Let's look at that number from the transcript again. Allosaurus accounts for 75% of the carnivore fossils found. This means that while you might encounter a lone Saurophaganax, you would likely face three, four, or even more Allosaurus individuals. They were everywhere. They dominated the landscape. Why was this? It was likely due to their average size. A five-ton Saurophaganax needed a colossal amount of calories to survive, forcing it to hunt the largest prey and likely requiring a vast territory. This naturally limited its numbers. Meanwhile, Allosaurus at 
only 1.7 tons was more flexible. It could hunt a wider variety of prey from mid-sized herbivores to teaming up to take down even the giant sauropods. And that is the key cooperation. The theory of pack hunting Allosaurus changes everything. A single Sauropagan axe might be the king of a solo match, but what could it do against a coordinated pack of lions? A pack of Allosaurus could easily harass, exhaust, and slowly bring down an opponent much larger than themselves. They turn their individual size disadvantage into a collective strength. So, we have two definitions of king. Sauropagonax was the king of absolute power, the undisputed champion of individual might. But Allosaurus was the king of dominance, the true ruler of the Morrison formation. Thanks to its sheer numbers, its adaptability, and the power of unity. They weren't the strongest individual, but they were the most successful species. And in the game of evolution, success is the ultimate measure of power. The Morrison Battle Royale finally has its answer. Its king was not the largest, but the one who was most adaptable and widespread. Allosaurus, with its incredible success, left a legacy that would last for millions of years, becoming one of the most iconic predators of all time. The struggle for survival 150 million years ago teaches us a valuable lesson. That strength comes in many forms. There is the strength of muscle, of size, but there is also the strength of numbers, of strategy, and of cooperation. And more often than not, the crown doesn't go to the one with the strongest punch but to the one who knows how to play the game best. What do you think? Do you agree that Allosaurus was the true king? Or do you believe the absolute power of Sauropaganax was the deciding factor? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. If you love these ancient battles and in-depth analyses, don't hesitate to hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe to the channel to join us as we uncover more mysteries of the lost world. Thank you for watching, uh, we'll see you on the next adventure.